Hi friends, welcome to Beautifully Bookish Bethany. In today's video, I'm going to be reading the iconic Cushiel's Dart by Jacqueline Carey for the very first time, and the upcoming Cassiel's Servant, which is apparently a retelling from a different character's perspective. I think this should be really interesting because I've never read Cushiel's Dart, and so I'm going to be reading this one first and then following it up with Cassiel's Servant. Thank you to Tor for sending me these books. This isn't a sponsored video, but they did send me books for review. There are these brand new gorgeous trade paperback copies of this iconic series, and I'm excited to read it. I've just barely started. I'm partway into the third chapter, so I've not read very much yet, but so far I'm really intrigued. It's setting up a pretty interesting world with a main character who was sold as a child, and the part that I'm reading, I think she's like seven years old, which is pretty young. I do know from hearing other people talk about the series and kind of the description that she ends up becoming a sex worker, like a temple sex worker, and that some of what this is doing is trying to interrogate the connection between sex and religion and the way that it's handled, which is interesting. There is a chunk of the story, I guess it's a little info dumpy, but I didn't mind because the prose is really lovely. I'm enjoying it so far. But there is a section that gives us information about the background of the religion that their society subscribes to. It's based on this idea that kind of a version of Jesus as he was dying was part of giving birth to a baby along with the tears of Mary Magdalene and that person created sort of this new version of a religion. One of his followers still subscribes to traditional priesthood ideas of celibacy but the basic tenet of faith for the rest of them is love as thou wilt. So I think this is going to be interesting. I don't know if it'll totally hold up to today but I think the concept is really interesting. And I'm very curious to see what this new version from a different character's perspective looks like. So clip number one, I will do updates as I hit different points in the book and have things to update you on, but I'm excited to get started reading Cushiel's Dart. Stay tuned. So I have been kind of obsessively reading this book. I'm so into it. Like I get why both why it's so popular and why people have so many problems with it because like valid it there are 100 percent things that aren't great about it but it's so compelling i could not have read this at a different point in my life though like this is about where i'm at i'm about a third of the way in yeah earlier in my life no i couldn't have gotten through this it's there's it's a lot there's a lot of like bdsm sex work stuff that she engages in. I'm gonna say thank you to Katie Robert for like easing me into getting used to reading a little bit of that stuff because that maybe that prepared me for reading Jacqueline Carey. But the politics and the characters are so interesting and the way that the religion is structured is so fascinating. Like I totally get why there are people who can't read this because because like you know the fact that they start process of sexualizing people when they're still children and that they're considered of age as teenagers like uh, yeah like that's I can understand why people would have a hard time with that. I was nervous at the beginning of the book that they were gonna have her start doing this stuff when she was like 10, which was not the case. Not the case. Like, she couldn't even consent to make a decision to commit herself to the service of Nama, who, which means like religious prostitution, like prostitution, but like there's a spiritual element to it. Anyway, point is she had to be 13 before she was considered of age to even take the vows to do that. And then it's still a couple of years from then, like 15, 16, before you were expected to actually engage in sex work. So young, but not as bad as what it I was wondering early on. Fedra is interesting because she's this unusual person who finds pleasure from pain, this very like rare person. And we see how that impacts her, how that impacts her decisions. Sometimes they're not great. Sometimes it harms her more than it helps her. But I think it's intended to have this kind of nuance. We finally just got introduced to Jocelyn. And he is, I think, a really important character. He's the one who I think the 
Cassiel's servant. I think it's from his perspective. It takes a while for him to be introduced, but he is part of this order that are celibate. And now he's been brought on. I'm not going to spoil like a lot of things that happen or anything, but he's been brought on as kind of a bodyguard for Fedra. And he's kind of horrified by what she does, horrified that she allows herself to be hurt by clients as part of her, her work, but he's kind of coming to terms with that. And I think that they're going to develop a really important relationship, albeit not necessarily a sexual one. And you know, it is really interesting because Fedra is a character who really is going after what she wants. She's, you know, to whatever extent she can, making decisions for herself making decisions to put her life in the direction that she wants it to go, even if those aren't the choices that everybody around her would necessarily make. The way that things are set in this world too is that there is, what would you call it, indentured servitude. People are bought and sold. However, it can't be for life. They have to have the opportunity to pay off the mark against them. And it is kind of cool because the way that you see the progress against that mark is this tattoo that eventually goes all the way up your spine. So Fedra, even though she was sold as a child, she has the opportunity to get herself out of that enslavement and decide what she wants to do with her life. And in a fairly reasonable amount of time, given the amount of money that she gets as a sex worker. Yeah, I don't know. I'm finding it really compelling. It's a long book. Um, I still have a lot more to go, but I'm about a third of the way into it, and I can see why this captured so many people's imaginations. Some of the stuff, I mean, honestly, like some of the stuff she does, I'm like, oh my, I know, I could never, but it's interesting because you're in her head, and so you see the way it impacts her and the, the way that she thinks about it. So yeah, like, are there valid reasons for people to not want to read this? for sure. I'm definitely glad I didn't try to read this earlier in my life because I don't think I could have gotten through it. But at this point, I'm really into it. It's really good. So I will check back in at some point, I don't know, semi-regularly and let you know how things are going. I think I'm going to try to make this relatively spoiler free so you get like a big picture overview. But I, there's so much intricacy and nuance to the political games that are being played. It's good. It's good. Hello, I finished reading Cushiel's Darts. Let's talk about it before I dive into Cassiel's Servant. This book was so great. I, it reminds me of how I used to read these long epic fantasy stories that had so much in just a single book. I feel like lately a lot of the things that I read really you're not covering that much ground in a single book. Things get divided up a lot more. Whereas this one, I mean, in the big trade paperback, it's under 700 pages, but the mass market is like 1100 pages. So it's a long book. These are some like thin pages and so much ground is covered. I, you know, I had heard about this because of the, the sexy scenes, the more erotic scenes and stuff, and that it was kind of scandalous. But the truth of the matter is that, is that well, yeah, there is, a, you know, a decent bit of sex in here because our main character is a sex worker. That's not what this book ultimately is. It's like, it's not a sex book, I guess. is it, It's a political fantasy book that's fascinating because it's told through the perspective of this kind of high-end courtesan who's highly specialized because she is able to get into places and get information from people that other people can't. And it is true that historically there have been plenty of sex workers and high-end performers and things like that who have been spies, who've been used to get political information. And, you know, if we look at history of certain places like China, for instance, there have been cases of sex workers who become mistresses, who eventually rise to power that sort of like are, you know, that kind of like claw their way to power. Not that that's what Fedra is doing, although I think Melisande is such an interesting character. So Melisande I haven't talked about yet, but she's in some ways the villain of the story, but also her and Fedra have this really intense connection, this uh, kind of erotic, darkly erotic connection. And I think that's really interesting as well to see the lengths that she's willing to go to and the lengths that she's not to get the power that she wants and how devious she is about it. This is like, this is a book where 
power is not necessarily about how strong you are, but about how canny you are. I love the fact that there's this even this little prophecy in here that is told to Melisande saying that which that which yields is not all, not necessarily weak or is not always weak. And Fedra is exactly that, that, you know, she is in the bedroom, the submissive, right? She yields, but she's so strong and not at all weak and takes people by surprise and people don't expect from her what she is capable of. And I think that that makes for such a fascinating character to follow in the story. I really love it. One thing I also think is interesting about the way sex is handled in this book, and I've talked about some of this before, is like, number one, there is this spiritual component to it that she sees herself in line with Kushiel, who I guess I, I'm realizing I think is like an angel, sort of, but that her service to God, um, her spiritual sacrifice was sleeping with all of these people. And so we see Fedra through different experiences she has chosen and unchosen feeling like she's better understanding this deity that she's been chosen by and that I think is interesting there is a really clear line drawn between things that are consensual and things that are not consensual and I think what you see with Fedra is that with the clients that she agrees to have have an assignation with she always has some degree of of love for them right? Because this is something she has chosen, she's agreed to, even though maybe she's being physically harmed in the process or harmed in other ways. And, you know, like that's a little bit complicated for her, how she feels about that, even though it's something that she wants. That, that That's a whole other can of worms. But then when she is, I'm, I'm just, I, I don't want to like spoil specific plot events, I guess, but then there is a period in which she is enslaved and then that is not something that she chose. Those were not people she chose. And so she's much more willing to betray them. And she carries anger, a lot of understandable anger about that. And I, I like this, right? Because this came out, when did this come out? Okay, so this came out in 2001, right? This is well before the Me Too movement, well before we were talking about consent in some of these more nuanced ways. Uh, and, you know, the fact that you have a main character who is a sex worker that people might assume well this is what you do therefore it shouldn't matter in what context you do it and turn around and show that no it does really matter and the consent piece does really matter and make a difference I think that that's kind of revolutionary and not to say that this is a perfect book by any means or that the way that it depicts everything is perfect it's not but I I think there's something there that is really important and the way that Kushil takes control of her own life is really important. The other thing that I think we should talk about is her relationship with Jocelyn and I I love their relationship. I see why he is such an iconic character. They have this really deep tender relationship with each other that grows over time and they do sleep together once that we know of but afterwards he feels guilty about it because he's he's taken a vow of chastity and they sort of say well like it was first because of circumstances maybe this doesn't really count and they go back to at least as far as we know having a pretty chaste relationship with each other but one that is full of loyalty and love and commitment and care and yet Phaedra loves other people as well and you know it's like if there was anything that I think probably speaks to people who have a more polyamorous experience I think this is probably one that does where you can see the different kinds of loves and connections that she has with various characters throughout them some of them platonic some of them not some of them toxic some of them healthy there's a lot of variation there I'm not saying they're all good romantic connections but that she ultimately really owns herself. It's not the case where love means that someone else needs to own her or own her body and that is not even something that she wants and if they really understand her and love her they wouldn't impose that upon her and I, I don't know like I just think she's such an interesting character. I loved this book. There's so much in terms of politics and betrayal and I yeah like I I thoroughly enjoyed this. I don't know what I'm gonna rate it. I'm gonna have to think about it. I was thinking four and a half stars, maybe five. I yeah, who would have known? I wouldn't I didn't expect to have such a good time with this book. And it's one that I could see revisiting 
in the future as well. The the world building is so rich. I I I am such a fan of this. So um, that is Kashil's darts. I am excited to check out Cassiel's servant and see how I feel about it because it's all from Jocelyn's perspective, and we get to know bits and pieces about his life and his family but we don't know a lot about his upbringing so I'm curious to see if this is going to give us some of his backstory from before he meets Fedra. I'll let you guys know how that goes and yeah I would say that this book has a very satisfying plot arc. You have the climax and then you have a, a time of like calm for the characters and time for them to sort of rest from everything that's happened in this book which is a lot before some things start going again that makes you interested in okay maybe what's gonna happen in the next book but I think this on its own it feels like such an epic tale that's very satisfying. I was a fan. I will check back in once I've started reading Cassiel's Servants. Hello it has been a minute but I am back with an update. I am about halfway through Cassiel's Servant and I want to talk about it. Okay so I guess number one I should say that as a project the idea of retelling a novel from a different character's perspective is typically not something that appeals to me. I usually question whether there is enough added value to make it worth retelling the entire book from that perspective if you didn't include their perspective the first time. And when it comes to this book, I feel a little bit of that, but it's mixed. The first part of the book is genuinely really interesting because it's something entirely new. We're getting Jocelyn's background, so a little bit of the later parts of his childhood and everything from when he first enters training as a Castellan to when he finishes and gets assigned to Fedra. That whole part of this so far I do think is really interesting. It adds something a little bit different. We're getting a peek into this different part of the world, the way that the Brotherhood does their training, some of the things that Jocelyn went through in his years coming up that impact the person that we know him to be as an adult. All of that I do think adds a lot of value to the story of Kushiel's dart more largely. That said, once we get to the point where he's now been assigned as a bodyguard to Fedra, it's really, it really just feels like a glossed over version of the events that we already know from Kushiel's Dart, because it is literally just retelling it from his perspective. So it doesn't, I mean, to its credit, at least it's not trying to rehash all the same stuff that we get in Kushiel's Dart. It's a little different because Jocelyn doesn't know all the same things Fedra does. He's a bit of an outsider. The amount of awareness he has of what is really going on is much lower. Also there's a lot of key scenes where he wasn't present. He was off doing something else, waiting for Fedra to finish an assignation or whatever. And I don't know that that's particularly interesting. That said, I could see how if I had been a fan of Kushiel's Dart for a really long time, like a lot of people have been, it would be so exciting to get something like this where it's another opportunity to return to this world and the story that you love so much with a different beloved character. Now if I were going to direct this, I would say that this to me would work a little bit better as a novella instead of a full-length novel or a shorter novel where you're really focusing on Jocelyn's early years. Maybe include a couple of or even a compilation of like a like a like a bind up of a novella of his early years which is the first part of this book, a couple of short stories that offer us his perspective on some key moments and then maybe something something later. Like that to me as an anthology would make a lot more sense than retelling the entire story from his perspective. I, other people may disagree with me. I think people who've been longtime fans of the series might really appreciate this more than I am. It's fine. Like the writing is still good. There are tidbits that I'm finding interesting as we're seeing Jocelyn's perspective and when things start to shift for him in terms of how he views Fedra and his feelings towards her and the way that he uh, is is wrestling with his vow of chastity, his vows as a Castellan, um, and his ideas of honor and duty and all of that I do think has interesting bits and pieces to it. I just don't know that 
it makes the most sense to do this as a full novel my opinion that's that said, I'm only halfway we'll see where it goes right now um, at the halfway point they are in the process of trying to escape Scaldia so I know that there's a really big turning point that's about to happen in Jocelyn and Fedra's relationship so we'll see we'll I'm curious to see what we get in the second half of the book if there's any new material that makes things more interesting but so far my opinion of this is it's good and there are parts of it that I'm liking but I think I would have liked it better as an anthology that that just pulls some important pieces instead of retelling the whole story. That's that's me. So we'll see. I will check back in once I've made some more progress. Um, honestly, I'm getting through this pretty quickly at this point, so I will probably just check in once I have finished Cassiel's Servant with another update, and then we will talk about the project as a whole and wrap this up. All right, I have finished reading Cassiel's Servant. And I, I stand by what I said in the last clip. I just don't think that this needed to be a full length novel. I think that this should have been an anthology of some short stories and a novella about Jocelyn's early life. It, it's just not, the bulk of this book is just not all that interesting. And while reading Cushiel's Dart felt magical and propulsive and Fedra was such an incredible character to be in her head for that many pages this felt like a chore to get through a lot of it not the early part of the book the early part was good and there were definitely key moments and scenes throughout that also were poignant and interesting and added something getting Jocelyn's perspective but I just don't think that this needed to be a book on its own there is a review that I linked in my Goodreads review that I think kind of hits the nail on the head with this, saying that the, the majority of this book, aside from the early years with the Castellane Brotherhood, a lot of it just feels like a not super interesting Wikipedia summary of the events of Cushill's Dart. It doesn't have the same magic, and even in this book, Fedra is still the main character, but from Jocelyn's perspective, and I I just don't know why we needed to have a 500 page book retelling all the events of Cushiel's Dart. I just don't think, I just, just don't think we needed this. So this was a really interesting project because I ended up loving Cushiel's Dart so much and I will say I'm really excited to get into the rest of the original trilogy since Tor did send me the next two books as well and I'm excited to be back in Fedra's head. I, I just wish that this had been done differently. I could have really loved it if it had been not such a large project, if it had given us the pieces of this that are genuinely interesting, that are really adding to the characterization, adding to the world building, without all the other stuff because it's just it you know as delightful as Cushiel's Dart was to read this felt like a chore to get through during a lot of it which is kind of a bummer and I don't think what you're going for. I do think that people who are big fans of the series might still enjoy it. I think it's still worth reading just know that you might want to kind of skim through parts of it especially if you've read Cushiel's Dart anytime recently and you're pretty familiar with events. I, there, there's a lot of places where I'm like, I, I just don't know that this added a lot of value, but there are scenes that are more poignant and more emotionally rich where there is something added to it. So that's kind of where I'm landing on this. I ended up giving Cushiel's Dart five stars. I'm giving this two and a half stars. I rounded up to three on Goodreads. If this had been a different kind of project with a more limited scope, it could see it being more like a four star read, but you know, your mileage on this may vary, um, but Cushiel's Dart I really loved. I'm so glad that I did this project and I'm really excited to see what Izzy thinks about it because we're doing an episode for Chapter 3 Podcast discussing both books, so it'll be interesting to hear her take. So hopefully this was interesting and uh, let me know in the comments down below any of your thoughts or feelings and let me know your experience with Cushiel's Dart. Have you read it? Do you love it? Do you not? Did this make you more interested in picking it up if you have it? Let me know all of that in the comments down below. If you like this video, it always helps if you give it a thumbs up. Subscribe if you want to see more. Thank you so much for watching, and I'll see you next time.